Hello students. So the first part or the first lecture today is on anatomy of the pulp. This is the first part of your lecture. So before we go into anatomy of the pulp, you should know what is endodontic treatment. Previously, you have learned about various procedures. You have also managed cases on the teeth where the caries involvement was limited to enamel and dentin. Once it proceeds further, be that is beyond dentin and reaches the pulp, then comes into picture the endodontic treatment. So, what is endodontics is endo is within, dontic is the tooth. So the treatment which deals about the pulp, that is, is called the endodontics. So once the caries process extends from the enamel into the dentin and into the pulp and infects the pulp, this inflammation and infection slowly spreads down to the root canal and then reaches the periapical area causing a periapical lesion. So ultimately leads to discomfort for the patient. So what do we do? What is the line of treatment for such cases? So first and the foremost is the excavation of the caries, what you have been doing all these days and further extending into the pulp. So gaining an access into the pulp, this is called the access cavity preparation. So why are we dealing with all this is before we go into the anatomy, I would want you all to know or have an idea what is endodontic treatment. So to, to have or to do a good anodontic treatment, you should have a good idea of the anatomy of the pulp. So initially, so the first step in anodontic treatment is the axis cavity preparation where we gain access to the pulp by a tooth preparation. The next step would be the cleaning and the shaping of the root canal. So there has, as we have seen in the earlier picture, the caries has extended into the pulp and into the root canal. So we have to remove all the infection and the dead pulp from inside. So this will be done with the help of files. This is the mechanical shaping and all this debris which has been produced is removed with the help of irrigation. So this is the second important step during our endodontic treatment or the root canal treatment. The third step is called the obturation. So once we have shaped it and cleaned it, the next step is the filling up of the root canal. We cannot leave it open. So it is filled up by an inert material called the gutta percha. And this procedure is called the obturation. So in a multi-rooted tooth or the molars, usually we find three to four root canals. These are called the root canals or in fact the orifices, which I'll be mentioning about later. So one after the other, after they're cleaned and shaped, they are obturated with the gutta percha this way. So here, here we can observe that these two canals have been obturated and the third canal is being filled and later all the three root canals filled, sheared off and then restored. So this is how an endodontic treatment is done. So a small video showing the same, the caries procedure extending into the enamel, dentine and then the root canal causing a periapical inflammation. So we gain an axis and then do the shaping with the files finally obturate it and then if necessary give a crown. See once this obturation and treatment is done there will be healing of the periapical tissues. So why should we know the anatomy of the tooth? So now you have seen the series of slides on endodontic treatment. So if we have to do some endodontic treatment first of all you should know what is the anatomy of the pulp inside. How is it? What are the branches? Is it very simple? No. This is the three dimensions. So before we proceed about any endodontic treatment or root canal procedure, we should have a clear idea of the anatomy of the pulp. The anatomy of the pulp is not as simple as it looks on a radiograph because the radiograph gives us only a two dimensional image whereas the pulp in reality is very complicated. It has rami or connections between the root canals and many projections. So this is how or this is 
how a root canal looks or this is how complicated is the pulp within the root canal so before we start the endodontic treatment we should know all the intricacies of the pulp so going into detail about it which let us know few terminologies so first of all what is root canal system so the root canal system is all that space within the dentine which is occupied by the pulp so which we have studied i think from the first year videos itself you know that this is enamel this is dentine and the pulp so the entire space that is occupied by the pulp is called the root canal system this root canal system is broadly classified or divided into pulp chamber and the root canal this is the pulp chamber which is found in the anatomic crown of the tooth and the root canal which is in the anatomic root the projections of this pulp into the cusps is called the pulp horns the extensions or the of this pulp into the root into the root is called the root canal orifice which i had mentioned in the previous slide so the pulp chamber narrows down and enters into the root as a root canal and that point is called the orifice so there are also extensions of the pulp found in the root canal so when these extensions are found near the furcation they are called as furcation canals and when they are found way down near the apical portion of the root it is called the accessory canals and when the canals have to open out to the open out to the periapical area or the periodontal area so those openings are called this is called the apical foramen this is called the accessory foramen so all this accessory foramen and the apical foramen have to be completely sealed during obturation another terminology that you should be aware of is the anatomic apex and the radiographic apex the anatomic apex is the tip or end of the root that is determined morphologically whereas in a radiograph the tip of the root the tip of the tooth is called the radiographic apex so what is the difference is morphologically here you can appreciate two apices or two apex whereas in the radiographic apex that is not appreciated it looks as if, as if there is a single apex that is how so when we study the morphology of the tooth or the anatomy of the pulp we will know all the intricacies and the complexities of the root canal system so that we can confidently face them when we are doing endodontic treatment so why should we know about the root apex is because whatever treatment procedure we do the shaping procedure or the cleaning procedure we should always limit our instruments within the tooth at no cost should we go beyond the apical foramen what does it mean be going beyond apical foramen means that we are entering the periapical tissue which may be wounded with our instruments the other terminology that you should be aware of is the working length though we'll be covering it in detail later mainly we should be aware of this radiographic apex and anatomic apex is to measure the working length the working length is the distance from the incisal reference point to the point where we should end our obturation so it can vary so the working length of this tooth varies from the working length of this tooth as the apical foramina ends here so all these are the variations in the root canal anatomy which we should be aware of while doing a root canal treatment so the two import other two important terminologies that you should be aware of is the apical foramen and the apical constriction so this is the narrowest part the blue star which represents the narrowest part of the root canal which is called the apical constriction or also the minor diameter the minor diameter widens up as you can see or appreciate better in this picture so this b is called the apical foramen or the major diameter so all our instrumentation and obturation should end here we cannot have a good seal once our once we start shaping or 
obturate till this point or this point. We should not reach a apical foramen. Apical constriction of the minor diameter is the area where our shaping procedures and the obturation procedures should end. This, you just have to remember these terminologies as we keep using these terms as we go further into access to preparation, shaping and cleaning and obturation. Throughout endodontics, we keep using these terms. So here we end the part 1 of your anatomy of the pulp. We will continue it in the part 2. Thank you.